I didn't say to hate them. I'm just saying we don't need them here. Everybody knows who's trying to kill us, and it's like we can't say it. Post 9 11 world, we should be a little suspicious of any group trying to relocate to this community. They had the words not welcome there, and that's, that's a very clear sign. Muhammad was a f. He's a f out of the state. Someone in the middle of the night doused these engines with gasoline. This is violent. We have filed a lawsuit to stop the building of the mosque. They can claim religion all they want, but it don't mean you're going to come in here and do this in Rutherford County. It's my right as an American citizen to have a place of worship. Murfreesboro is kind of a small, big town. It's a beautiful place where a family can live and grow and be a part of a community, a very loving community. We love Murfreesboro, and we love it for the most part, the way it is and the way it has been. It doesn't matter what religion you are, what race you are, whatever, the people here are so welcoming. Talk to the residents of Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and they'll tell you the strength of their city lies in its close-knit community and strong religious faith. The city has 104,000 people. More than 140 churches. Mosque. For decades, Muslims have lived and prayed alongside their neighbors. But in June 2010, their place in the community was questioned, exposing a growing fear of Islam in America, nearly 10 years after the attacks of 9 11. We, as citizens, we have families and we have children in this community, and we're trying to look out for our future. We thank you for your love. Yes. We thank you for your joy. We Kevin Fisher has lived in Murfreesboro for 20 years. God, if we get a little too high, just... He's a corrections officer and a single father. Last May, Kevin was stunned to discover local officials had approved plans for a 53,000 square foot Islamic center in his hometown. Neighbors were outraged that something of this nature was being basically shoved down our throats so we didn't know anything about it. A month later, the typically sleepy county commission meeting was anything but. So many people turned up for the public hearing, authorities wouldn't let them all in. I'm very happy to see this many people here that are really standing up. A few residents complained about the lack of notice of the mosque plan. I, I would respectfully ask for an expanded public hearing again. Virtually everyone else spoke out against the threat of Islam. Everybody knows who's trying to kill us. And it's like we can't say it. And I would encourage the boycott of any contractor associated with the project. Thank you. Our country was founded uh, through the founding fathers, uh, through the true God, the Father and Jesus Christ. I'm sorry, but they seem to be against everything that I believe in. And so I don't want them necessarily in my neighborhood. That concludes our public comment period. Thank you very much. Local officials refused to reconsider their unanimous approval of the plan. God bless America. We decided to hold a march so that the America, the whole world, everybody could see these people didn't get noticed. So that's what we did. Ignore their intolerance. We know why we're here. We call on our county commission to halt the problems of this mosque. Yeah. Under Sharia law, there is no freedom of speech. Among those marching against the mosque plan was prominent local resident and real estate developer, Sally Wall. My fourth great-grandmother was the first woman buried in a marked grave in Rutherford County. That's how long we've been here. And I think that has quite a bit to do with how you feel about what happens here in the community. Also marching, Sally's husband, Howard Wall, a local power broker and former Republican County Chairman. 
I always thought so that other people marched. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have to march, but, but who am I not to march? I want to show my interest in my community and my country. Here is this enormous building, which is going to be occupied by people who are of the same religion that the people are who we're fighting in Afghanistan, who we have been fighting in Iraq. Why are they building a mosque of nearly 53,000 square feet? That is a lot of square footage, and it's going to be a very expensive thing. Now, are 200 families, or 200 Muslims, however many they are, how are they going to pay for it? I know when we expanded our church, we're still paying for it. Other residents opposed to the mosque plan included Ronald Todd. For 93 years, Todd's family owned the land sold at auction to the Muslims in Murfreesboro. Todd says his grandparents are turning over in their graves because the land is being used to build a mosque. They worship another god than what I'm accustomed to worship. I've heard some rumors about a different law they go by, but if I live in Tennessee, I live by Tennessee law and the law of the United States of America. My name's Lou Ann Zelnick, and we're a group of citizens. We've organized Several local politicians seized on the issue, like Lou Ann Zelnick, who ran for Congress in Tennessee. We are joining with so many who feel that they're concerned because it is not the Christians, it is not the Jews that flew airplanes into the buildings. A strange place for a huge mosque. And Even televangelist Pat Robertson weighed in on the proposed mosque. You mark my word, if they start bringing thousands and thousands of Muslims into that relatively rural area, the next thing you know, they're going to be taking over the city council. More suspicions were raised after opponents claimed a member of the mosque had posted this photo of the leaders of Hamas, a U.S.-labeled terrorist group, on his MySpace page. He was suspended from the mosque for two months. Post 9-11 world, we should be a little suspicious of any group trying to relocate to this community. But many in Murfreesboro supported the mosque plan. The protest march that June day drew hundreds of people of different faiths rallying in support of religious freedom. Organized this rally in order to show support for the First First Amendment right of Murfreesboro residents to worship the way that they see fit. I think we all should be free to practice our religion. Among the mosque supporters, Lema Spinati, an 18-year-old Muslim in Murfreesboro. You could just see their, like in their eyes, you could see that hate. I didn't say to hate them, I'm just saying we don't need them here. Do you hear that? Why that? There's some shot fired. Yes. Oh. Yeah. The explosive fight yeah. over religion in Murfreesboro was just beginning. Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Police Department. lived here for so long and I've never seen this side of anyone before. Sometimes I still wake up and I'm like, is this really happening? Read the Quran! All infidels must die! To have all of these people come out and openly say that we are against, you know, this religion was very shocking. This mosque that they're trying to build, all it is is a training center. I don't want anybody in there creating something that can be used to attack us. I know they're afraid for their country, but, you know, to label all the Muslims and the Muslim community in Murfreesboro in particular to be terrorists, this is nonsense. Salah Spinati has lived in Murfreesboro for 20 years. It's where he and his wife Fatun raised their two daughters, Lemma and Dima, and their son Salim. Do you feel not welcome? No. To the contrary, actually, this is one of the most beautiful city in in the United States. The people over here are extremely, extremely hospitable and nice. How do we control two seven-segment displays? Salah is an engineering professor at Middle Tennessee State University in Murfreesboro. He was born in Syria. I'm, like, banking on lab to save my grade in that class. 
His daughters are students at MTSU. Here. Both were high school valedictorians. There were a few other Muslim students, but not very many at all. The Spinatis say they've always felt welcome in Murfreesboro, even after 9-11. Two days afterward, people who we did not know stopped us and say, please do, don't be afraid. We are the same. We are going to treat you in the same way. Professor Spinati arrived in Middle Tennessee in 1980. Only 10 Muslim families lived in Murfreesboro then. Their mosque was a small one-bedroom apartment. Today, there are 250 Muslim families living in Murfreesboro. The current mosque is often packed beyond capacity. There is really no place for us to pray or eat or do activities with the kids. People are usually praying on the sidewalk and in, in the parking lot. But they know it can be simple if we all do it together. Pushed by the center's imam, Osama Balul, the congregation pooled their money in 2009 to purchase a 15-acre parcel of land on the outskirts of town. It would be land for their new Islamic center. Where would you get the money from? We had a fundraising and we raised $320,000 for the, to buy the land. In one fundraising? Yes. We here did. in Murfreesboro? Yes, here. Mm -hmm. When you first walk the land, describe that feeling for me. It's exactly like a homeless who has found the most beautiful home. And it's a long journey, a lot of pain to get there, a lot of effort. And then finally, you are about to sit down and say, wow, it feels good. Their vision was to build the new facility in stages. There'd be a school, a gym, a swimming pool, a cemetery, and a 10,000 square foot mosque. For the younger generation of Muslims in Murfreesboro, the plans represented progress. When you first heard about the new building being built, what was your reaction? We went from a one bedroom apartment that was divided by a sheet to, you know, having this piece of 15 acre land. I hate to be cliche, but it was a dream come true. In November 2009, the congregation put up a sign announcing the future site of the Islamic Center. Then it was vandalized with a simple but disturbing message, not welcome. What did it feel like when that sign had not welcome? For someone who's lived here her whole life, pretty much. It had hard, you know, they, they had the words not welcome there, and that's, that's a very clear sign. We thought this an individual act. The sign company said, we will make you a new sign for free. A second sign put up at the site was cut in half eight months later. A disturbing preview of the days and months ahead, as fear and suspicion would threaten to derail the mosque project and turn neighbor against neighbor. We're asking for those individuals who know who may have been responsible for this crime to come forward with that information. Late August, Ramadan, for Muslims, the holiest time of the year. A time of reflection, praying, and fasting. Allahu Akbar. But for the Muslims in Murfreesboro, Ramadan was a time of unease. Their plans to build a new house of worship had produced strong opposition. Members of the congregation sought answers from the imam. Some of them were concerned. Some of them were scared. Some of them couldn't understand why. This why I couldn't provide it for them. Imam Osama Balul came from Egypt to America in 2004 to lead a small mosque in Irving, Texas. I consider myself a Texan without the Texan accent. 
Deep in the heart of Texas, Balul learned English and learned that in post 9-11 America, freedom of religion didn't mean freedom from suspicion. And I learned that I have to be careful because some people have an idea about Muslims and it is not a good one. Yes. <laughs> it was at the mosque in Texas where Imam Osama met his future wife, Ivy. I was raised Methodist. Mm -hmm. You, shortly after 9-11, decided to convert. Correct. For many people, yeah. converting to Islam would be the last thing they right. would do. Well, I think that anyone that has ever known someone that is Muslim and would hear the things that were being said, it just didn't make sense. So I picked up a book. And then I picked up another one, and another one, and um, until I read the Quran. And then I contacted the local mosque in my area. I've had a couple of comments because I am uh, an American Muslim. Some people feel like, you know, you're a traitor. How could you become one of them? This uh, architect built so many mosques around the area. Despite strong opposition, by late summer, Imam Osama and the other leaders of the congregation decided to go forward with the first phase of their project, grading and leveling the land. We did not have any kind of celebration. Or Why not? You could have done a big groundbreaking. That's how these things usually go. We don't want to sound like we are aggravating people's feeling. The low-key beginning did little to silence opponents who felt their concerns weren't being heard. I think they have a right to expand, but I think that the public has a right to say, wait a minute, there's some concerns here. Kevin Fisher, who'd led the protest march against the planned Islamic Center, said traffic was a big concern. By their own admission, they're going to draw people from all over the county. Now, you're going to put a whole lot of new drivers in the back roads of Tennessee. Concerns were also raised about the cemetery on the site. Already, one elderly Muslim had been buried there. You have well water out there. You have people who are going to be drawing off the same source. So according to their tradition, they don't bury with a casket, they don't bury with a vault. So you're telling me like a casket protecting a body is going to change the quality of the water versus a it body could. that's not in a casket? It could, yeah, absolutely. So how much of this is also, you just don't want a mosque in that neighborhood? Not one person that I know of or friends of mine or people I have, have read anything I've written have ever said they don't have a right to worship. They have a right to worship however they see fit. I feel like what they're doing is kind of taking things and throwing them at the wall and seeing what sticks. And it hasn't really stuck very well, but I think they're still trying. Does it feel like people are in a war with Islam? Yes, there's no doubt. I used to feel like people here are in a war with Islam. Some of them, yes. There is no doubt also. I'm very comfortable to say this. So you saved some of the messages? Yes, I did. Okay. There were disturbing voicemails. Tuesday, 6, 27 a.m. Muhammad was a f***ing. It's like the rest of you queer bitches. It's a f***ing state. So, what did you think when you heard that the first time? I couldn't believe that I heard this. And uh, and I, I was shocked, I would say, yeah. yes. And I don't like the term uh, go back home. If we are American, I guess this is our home. And uh, everyone has to realize this. In late August, construction was barely underway when members of the mosque received a call from the police. A fire in the middle of the night had damaged equipment at the site. And I looked at the site and, um, you know, tears started to come down, you know, it's why. You know, what did we do? Leaders of the congregation came to assess the damage. It's a natural growth to our community. I mean, we are growing. Suddenly, our interview was interrupted by the sound of gunfire. Like that? There's some shot fired. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Do you hear that? Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Police Department. 
fear had replaced concern. I don't know if we'll understand being here. I don't know. Just a little scared. That's what they're trying to do. I mean, it's, I mean, it's a terrorist act. I heard very loud shots coming from the, this way. All right, hang on. Up in the fields there. We're going to go up there and check for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, sure. it, it could very well be hunters. It could very well be. But we're going to check it out. we got plenty of guys it. in the area. Thank you. Thank and we'll make sure that we document at least your concerns. Thank you so, so much. You'll have some of the shows we're looking into. We're grateful. Okay. Work. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. This whole issue set. Yes. Uh, let's hope it's 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 a hunter um, and it's not something that was done intentionally. Uh, because I know this community is it's a good community. So. People can't don't have to be scared like this in America. This is America. Hey, what is this? People can disagree with each other kindly, but violent like this is nonsense. This is violent. For children to be scared in the mosque, it's bad. For all the people to be worried that, uh, about their safety, this is sad. This is sad. This is too much. This is enough, I guess. No, no, no. Days after the suspicious fire, Imam Osama addressed his congregation. I believe those people opposing this project, they do not understand. The consequence of what they are doing, they are damaging the kids while they are damaging the image of this country. Protests, vandalism, and now a suspicious fire. Let's go! Yet the fight over the planned Islamic center of Murfreesboro was just beginning. What we're saying to the court is they can claim religion all they want, but it don't mean you're going to come in here and do this in Rutherford County. a $20,000 reward being offered for information leading to the arrest and prosecution of person or persons responsible for committing arson on August 28th. A suspicious fire had damaged equipment at the construction site of a new mosque in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Days later, the FBI confirmed the Muslim community's worst fears. It was arson. Somebody knows something. We must speak up for the freedom and the liberty of every person. While many in the community gathered to condemn the arson, some opponents had a different take. It didn't make sense to me. Influential real estate developer Sally Wall had her doubts. So you think it was faked? Honestly, I do. And of course, I might be wrong. To what end? Why would someone fake their own? I don't know. Now, now here's one of those they say things. I'm told that, that they do that everywhere they go to make people think everybody's against us. Now, I'm not saying I think that is true. It could be. I think it was premature to automatically assume that it was a hate crime. But I'll tell you this, I disagree with, I disagree with violence. When you start having to rely on intimidating people to get your point across, I think you lose all your validity. Testing, one, two, three. For months, Kevin Fisher and other opponents had tried everything to halt the construction of the 53,000 square foot Islamic Center. Hey, how you doing? We went through every conceivable means to ensure that our rights were upheld. The meetings at the commission, we went through petitions, we went through speaking with our representatives, our mayor. Armed with his bullhorn, Fisher attended another commission meeting in September, once again to press local officials to halt construction of the mosque. I'm full down here, sir. You can try upstairs. Okay. He's the one that told me I couldn't go in and speak. The meeting was so crowded, he couldn't get in. Next on our list... Lemma Spinati, a member of the Muslim community, did get to speak. So you see, I'm actually not very different from any of you or your kids or your grandkids. Except for one thing. I was born and raised as a patriotic American Muslim. 
On September 11, 2001, my religion was hijacked by extremists. We have nothing to fear but fear itself. I'm take our goddamn lesson anymore. That's garbage. Frustrated, Fisher walked out of the commission meeting and made a surprising announcement. We have filed a lawsuit to stop the building of the mosque. Later that night, Lemma Spinati found herself face to face with Luann Zelnick, the congressional candidate who had denounced the mosque project. And a lot of people stand with me. Zelnick had finished second in the Republican primary. And I don't understand why you are not outraged with the rights of children and females under Sharia law. It is time to step up. I'm Muslim. I think you're wonderful. I have Muslims to call me. And I've never felt you. oppressed by Good. anyone. I'm glad you haven't. But what about the others that have? have who? Who in this county, who in this county that is a woman has been oppressed by anyone? <laughs> you, are you through? I've never yeah. seen anyone in Murfreesboro, Murfreesboro, any woman in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, that has been oppressed by any man that is a Muslim. Okay, would you well, interview her? I think she's great oh, interview. Yeah, she really time. wants to take uh, over, and I think that's no, go important. Ahead. You no, have go your ahead. point. Go ahead. I think you're really important. <laughs> True to his word, in late September, Kevin Fisher and three other Murfreesboro residents filed their lawsuit to immediately block the construction of the mosque project. The lawsuit is simply seeking to do an investigation of this group to find out exactly where this group stands and whether it poses any kind of risk to the community. having business before this court please come forward and you shall be heard judge we're here today on an issue of a temporary restraining order the suit claimed local officials failed to give the community adequate notice there would be a vote on the mosque plan by the county's planning commission say we're talking about a 52,000 square foot facility defense attorney Josh McCreary argued that under county law religious facilities are exempt from public hearings and when you look at the law, they do not have a valid complaint, and they certainly are not entitled to an injunction. But it quickly became clear plaintiff attorney Joe Brandon was going to argue that the Islamic Center of Murfreesboro was not a religious facility because Islam is not a religion. Mr. Gross, do you believe the Islamic Center of Murfreesboro is a religious institution? I do not know enough about the center. I know that Islam is practiced there by talking to the people who go there. Is Islam a religion? In my opinion? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What do you base that on? They have a belief in a deity, an afterlife. Now you say an afterlife. Is that like when you yell all the Akbar and blow yourself up and a bunch of people that you get seven virgins? Is that the afterlife you're talking about? Where you strap a bomb on your chest, blow up unsuspecting people that didn't know anything about you the day before, and then, so you get you some virgins. Is that the afterlife that you're calling a religion? It's a religion. I do not know if that's what they practice there, sir. Mm -hmm. I've known that some Muslims believe that, some I've talked to don't. Do you believe Allah and God is the same? Your Honor, none of this is I'll relevant, Your Honor. You know what that says? Allah Akbar. During the hearings, several local residents took to the stand to link the mosque project to the threat of radical Islam. This uh, organization is presenting themselves as a peace-loving organization, and in, act in actuality, some of their leadership is radical. I think every law-abiding citizen in the United States of America should stand up against Sharia law. Sally Wall was in court almost every day. She helped fund the lawsuit. Every time you turn on TV, every time you pick up the paper, there is a radical Muslim this, no terrorist that, and, and you can't really overlook it unless you can't read and can't hear. Look at Europe, and I've traveled quite a bit. Uh, they have got a problem that they never dreamed of. Nazis, Nazis, Nazis! In Europe, various political parties have rallied against the spread of radical Islam in their countries. 60% want to I don't want to leading several European governments to pass laws limiting the religious freedom of Muslims, including a ban on the construction of minarets in Switzerland, and in France, a ban on Islamic face veils.
in the United States, concerns about mosque projects have generated protests from New York to California. In Islam, a mosque means we have conquered this country. And in Middle Tennessee, in the last three years, two mosques within 50 miles of Murfreesboro have been targeted by hate, including one burned to the ground. There are other problems at other mosques. Why not just not build it? Because it's my right. It's my right as a human being. It's my right as an American citizen to have a place of worship. Do you understand people's fear? The 9-11 hijackers used religion. I definitely understand people's fears, but you can't possibly, you know, have this veil that covers everyone under one religion just because of something that a few people committed. Your Honor, this is, this is a circus is what this is. Not really. Inside the courtroom, the fight to halt the Islamic center of Murfreesboro would continue. Why would we extend to any religion the right to cancel out the Constitution for which we're founded upon. Mr. Jordan, where are you employed? Uh, I'm a county commissioner. Can you envision in your wildest dreams how something could be called a religion that promotes the abuse, physical abuse of women? I wouldn't call it a religion, but I'm not the one that makes the definition of what is a religion. In a small courtroom in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, Islam was on trial. Well, I've been under the impression that is Islam has been a religion for thousands of years, whether I agree with it or not. You know, if it was Sharia law, you wouldn't even be out here right now. The planned construction of a new Islamic center had divided this small city. They should have the freedom to build a mosque. Yes, it does. Opponents claim the facility would increase traffic damage water quality and provide a foothold for radical Muslims and Islamic law. This particular case cries out for a revocation of the permit. Lemma Spinati, a Muslim born and raised in Murfreesboro, attended the hearing. Sharia law supports and dictates the beating and physical abuse of women with a whip. You're to hang a whip up in your house and if your wife or your girlfriend does not submit, you're to use the whip against her. When the opposition talks about Sharia law, mm -hmm. they talk about it coming here to America, yes. oppressing women, torture, beating. Mm -hmm. Do they have it wrong? Yes, they do. A lot of things that are culture have been mistaken for religion. The Quran that I've read has never said torture was okay for anyone or beating women, you know, it was okay. None of this is okay. What Sharia is, is a way of life. You know, I am mandated as a Muslim to pray five times. I am mandated to fast during the month of Ramadan. And I'm mandated, if I'm able to, to go and uh, do pilgrimage. That's Sharia law for me. Allah. Sharia, according to Muslims, is God's word on how you're supposed to live your life. Noah Feldman is a professor of international law at Harvard. He's written several books on Islam and Sharia law. If you look across the Muslim world, you can see a lot of difference in how customs and practices operate among people, all of whom believe that they're following the Sharia. As a general matter, the Sharia is what you make of it. And there are plenty of Muslims who interpret the Sharia in a progressive way so that it's equal towards women and progressive towards women. Prominent Murfreesboro resident Sally Wall helped organize the lawsuit. She's convinced Sharia law isn't harmless. During our conversation, she showed me a photo of a woman punished under Taliban rule. And this is the cover of Time magazine. Exactly. Horribly Except disfigured. Him. Right. And she didn't have any ears either. You're realistically worried that this could happen here I in the United States. Really. It happened to her. In Afghanistan. I understand. There are large Muslim populations in the United States already. I know that. I mean, New York City, we have a big Muslim population. I know population. That. There's no Sharia law in New York City. It is creeping in, though, I believe. And I think it will creep in as there are more Muslims coming here because that, that's what they've taught. I think they should try to come into the 21st century. Meaning do what? Uh, assimilate. If you would quit covering, you would find this a much easier place to live. Obviously, I'm not oppressed. 
I'm married to the imam in the mosque. If anyone was going to inflict Sharia law or whatever, obviously it would be my husband. Yeah, Mama Sugar is back. You know, we make the decisions here in the house as a family, yeah, yeah, just as anyone Sugar else would do. Bye, Ma. I love you. Happy day at school. Should Americans be worried about Sharia law? Our Constitution prohibits explicitly any religious system becoming the established law of our country. So such a thing would be completely unimaginable in our country, and rightly so. Is Sharia a religion? During the nine-day hearing to stop the building of the mosque... There are people out there who have all kinds of beliefs. 23 witnesses were called to testify. Not one was a member of the Murfreesboro Mosque. I do. If they practice Sharia law, would it still be your opinion that this is a religion? I don't know. In October 2010, in the middle of the hearing, attorneys from the Federal Department of Justice took the uncommon step of delivering a message to the judge in the case. A reminder that according to the U.S. government, Islam is plainly a religion. We want to be allowed to ask questions. My position is, how do you believe anything if you don't question it? And the issue of whether Islam is a religion has never been decided. I thought Islam was considered to be one of the three great religions, right? Can you tell me what you base that on? Scholars have said that. People who study it have said that. Well, you can find an expert to testify hell's a nice house, too. They can claim religion all they want, but it don't mean you're going to come in here and do this in Rutherford County. Council, we very much appreciate that. The judge's decision would surprise both sides in the fight. By November, as the first phase of the Murfreesboro Mosque continued, five miles away, a hearing to halt construction was drawing to a close. Jihad is when... Throughout the trial, plaintiff attorney Joe Brandon tried to link the Murfreesboro Mosque project to jihad and Sharia law. Does it make you want to look at it with a jaundiced eye? Even the county's mayor, a cattle farmer and lifelong Rutherford County resident and a Christian, found himself under attack. Sharia law says the United States Constitution is based upon ignorance. I would not support those things that you just read. What did you vote this place in for? We didn't approve Sharia law when we approved this site plan. You would think that your elected officials would care more about the needs and concerns of the community than about an entity that we know nothing about. Plaintiff Kevin Fisher was hopeful the judge would stop the project. With all my heart and all my soul, I believe we're doing the right thing. You do? I really You're do. You're 100% certain? I'd, I'd pray about it every night. How have the last nine months been? Upsetting. Very upsetting. In a one What's been the worst thing? Uh, the effect I think that it's had on the children in the community. Your daughter specifically? She's uh, shown concern about me wearing a scarf out in public. So what do you tell her when she when, when she says, are you going to wear a scarf? That, it, that it's okay, that the people don't hate us. You know, that this is, that there's maybe a few people that are not happy. Do you think people hate you? No, I don't think so. I think that people don't understand what Islam is and that what Muslims are. The threat of subverse Sharia. After nine days of arguments. That's hearsay, Your Honor. We've considered the fight. The judge, Chancellor Robert Corlew, delivered his decision. It's our duty at this time to deny the temporary injunctive relief that the plaintiff sought. Joe Brandon had lost. The construction of the future Islamic Center of Murfreesboro would be allowed to continue. We're not privileged to render decisions in accordance with our own opinions, whims, or desires. We must follow the law. Should you have focused more on there was a lack of transparency, the commissioners did not do their job, more on that and less on let's talk about Sharia law? Uh, my answer to that is no. We hope to have this case ultimately before the U.S. Supreme Court to make a determination of whether or not Sharia law can coexist with the U.S. Constitution. Will you try to stop the construction again? No, we're going to continue with, with lawsuits. On okay. what grounds? I'm not sure what the grounds are going to be this time, but we're, there will be another suit, I believe. I hope it is the end of it, but my gut feeling is telling me not. Why? Um, uh, these people are determined. The construction of this Islamic center 
is going to continue. If they build a mosque, that's their business. And their religion is their business. But when they try to put in Sharia law and usurp my beloved constitution, then that gets on the fight inside of me. If you are saying to me, are you going to give up? No, no. If they are fighting this until the end of it, we will do the same and even more. And we will have something they don't have. We will have the constitution in our sight. <laughs> The vandalism, the arson, and the gunfire at the mosque site remain under investigation. The congregation continues to raise funds and hopes to begin the actual construction of the mosque in August. Have you met the Muslims in Murfreesboro? Sure. I've known Muslims forever. My sister lived in Saudi Arabia. My brother lived in Iran. Yeah, certainly I have. Have you met the ones who are involved in the, the mosque here? You know, I have not. They have made no effort to get in touch with me, and I have made no effort to get in touch with them. Younger people think that I am a bigot and that I am uh, against freedom of religion for Are the you? Muslims. Are I'm you? not a bigot. Are you against freedom of religion for no. Muslims? I think we're worried about our American way of life. It would be great if the Muslims would try harder to realize that, that it's not something personal against them. I would rather you and I sit here 20 years from now and you interview me and say, you know what, I was wrong. I was completely wrong about them. They've been wonderful and peaceful. But you know what, what if I'm right? Look down the road 10 years. How does Murfreesboro look to you? I think it's going to look like before this whole thing started. I think it's going to die down eventually. And I'm really hoping that some of our opposition, I invite Kevin Fisher to the mosque whenever it's built. And hopefully they'll see that there's really nothing to be afraid of. <laughs>